Greetings and salutations. I I am the Raven. That is purple. This is the excavation of Hobbs Ball. Recording session number two. Joining me per usual is Lady Mage. Seriously, why is this game glitching? Well, last Actually, session. What's this? Oh shit, there's voice acting. I couldn't hear the voice acting because OBS hates me. No, OBS works as it should. There's a strange stone strapped to the cover. Is this for some reason? Discord. It's weird. It doesn't mm, share just... games sometimes. So somebody be sick. My husband is trying to help them. Beta Epsilon 11? Seems like a starship thing. Mm -hmm. I thought those were hands for a second and snakes. Pour out my spirit. Uh, don't do that. Y you need your spirit, dude. It appears to be a journal full of hogwash. I don't recognize the handwriting. Maybe Stanley knows more about it. Good morning. How's your head, Miss Bateman? That was quite the tune you treated us to last night. To be honest, Stanley, I felt better. I take it you slid this journal under my door? I beg your pardon? The journal, Stanley. I certainly did no such thing. Nor could have anyone else. You're the only guest staying here. What's the meaning of all this? Do you propose that it manifested itself out of thin air? Well, uh... I'm sorry. I just don't understand how else it could have got there. Are you sure there was no one else here overnight? Without doubt. How very, very peculiar. So, what does it say inside? Take a look. Well, I can't make head nor tail of it. Neither can I. Maybe someone else in the village can help you with it. What do you make of this stone? That's a funny looking thing. It's got a cockerel on it. Yes, but have you seen anything like it? Never. Guess it's nothing to crow about. Do you ever have strange dreams, Stanley? Me? I sleep as sound as a baby. I had one such dream last night. It was so vivid. What were it about? <laughs> I was at Hobbs Barrow. Oh? But everything was different. Great peaks soared in the distance. And there was a creature. A creature, you say? Yes. It's in the a purple. Short, robed fellow. Eyes as black as pitch. It told me that my father had been there in Hobbs Barrow many years ago, but something went wrong and the creature helped him escape. It said that I would find proof in the morning. Oh, the journal. You've had a premonition, lass. Please, Stanley, I've no time for that nonsense. But I'll admit it's a strange coincidence. Now, what did I tell you about Hobbs Barrow? That I should leave it alone? Aye. Hogwash. Your dream reminds me of a story from my childhood. An old folk tale about Hobbs Barrow. What is this folk tale you mention? Well, when I were a wee boy, there were talk of a goblin. They say... He lived inside Hobbs Barrow, hence the name, Hobbs Barrow. Dark. Hob, or coming snark. from Hob Goblin, of course. Unfortunately, I don't remember anything else about it. I was told not to believe in such fairy tales, Stanley. Don't close your mind to such things, lass. I'm sure Mr. Shoulder will tell you more. Perhaps, if I ever meet him. Goodbye. See you soon. There's a glistening Good morning, thing. Mr. Kemp. Good day, Hello. Miss Tompkins. I'm here for his lordship's paper. Sorry, lass. Mr. Price hasn't dropped them off this morning. I heard he actually left the village yesterday. 
Indeed, I can vouch for that. Ma'am, good day. Oh dear, his lordship won't be pleased. My sincerest apologies, Miss Tompkins. I'll come back in a few days. Ta-ra! Goodbye. Okay, jump the volume a bit more so I can hear you better. Crack and jump, so nothing special. The knife is stuck deep in the table. Why the fuck is there a knife stuck <gasps> deep in the... Goodness me, I can't budge it. Be careful, Miss Bateman. You'll cut yourself. I spent all morning trying to get that bloody thing out. I shall be having words with that scoundrel next time he shows his face. Who did it? <sighs> Curses. We have our very own Excalibur. It's all <laughs> yours. Damn it, he you beat me to the joke. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, he beat me to the damn joke! Right, I need to convince Mr. Bryden to let me excavate Hobbs Barrow and find out where this journal came from. Curses! I forgot I had this worm in my pocket. Poor thing is dead now. Rest in peace, Kenneth. Uh, gotta eat a new. Need a new worm now. Good day. I'm still setting up my stall. Come back later. Oh, I'm sorry. Market day. Are we in Silent Hill? Hey! Good morning, Father Roach. Ah, Miss Bateman. What a pleasure to see you again. Have you tracked down Mr. Shoulder yet? Don't get me started. I'll take that as a no. Indeed. Do you recognize this journal? Hmm, what a tatty old thing. You ought to take better care of your possessions, Miss Bateman. It's not mine. Then whose is it? That's precisely what I'm trying to find out. I'm afraid I can't help you. I haven't seen it before. What do you make of this stone? Hmm, I don't recognize the symbol from any Christian iconography. Did you make it yourself? No, never mind. What brings you to the square today? I'm meeting a couple of young congregation members to go over some scripture. You're welcome to join us. Thank you, Father Roach, but I have quite a busy day ahead of me. We will be at St. Edmund's, should you wish to join us later. What do you know of Lord Panswick? Oh, yes. A rather important fellow around here. His vast land holdings give many a steady employment. Thanks for your time. Lord be with you. Mr. Long mustn't be in. <laughs> okay, let's get to the business hand, convincing him that we need to ask the, about our Hello? want to excavate the burrow. Is anyone home? Jeez, people disappear a lot in this town. Mr. I wonder Bryden if very... doesn't seem to be here right now. I should come back a bit later. Maybe Mr. So Shoulder is awake? <laughs> Easy girl. I'm not fond of goats at the best of times, but this one seems particularly disagreeable. Thomasina! Good morning, Arthur. You look a bit addled. Are you feeling all right? I am not used to drinking as much as we did. Aye, my head is pounding. To tell you the truth, Arthur, I've had a somewhat puzzling morning. Oh? Someone slipped this journal under the door of my room. Whose journal is it? I have no idea. The text refers to some sort of excavation. 
Uh, Stanley must be playing tricks on you. He swore his innocence. I thought perhaps you might have done it? No, it wasn't me. That's for certain. Somehow I have a clear memory of last night. I wonder who left me this journal then? Mind if I take a closer look? Please, go ahead. The writings of a madman. I don't disagree. Do the sketches mean anything to you? No, not at all. But they turn me stomach. You might want to show this to Mother Mildred. Who is Mother Mildred? Some think her a witch. A witch? Aye. She might be able to help you with the symbols. Where can I find her? She lives alone in a little cottage within Hearn Wood here. You shouldn't have too much trouble finding her. Thanks, Arthur. You're welcome. The wise one. The wise woman. Sure you've heard of her? What do you make of this stone? It's a good shape for skimming across water. What is it? I'm not sure. It was strapped to the cover of the journal. How mysterious. I had a splendid time last night. I, I even remember most of it this time. Thanks for listening to me going on. I really appreciate it. The feeling is mutual. Thank you too, Arthur. Uh, Shouldn't you be manning the station? The line is down. Track damage between Bewley and Bakewell. No trains for a day or more. Does that mean I'm stranded here? For the time being, Thomasina. Capital. Well, we have a lot Why to do, do anyway, so... Think Mother Mildred is a witch. Just because a woman lives alone in the woods doesn't mean she flies about on a broomstick. There's more to it than that. They say she lays with demons. Who are they? Oh, you know, local folk. Hogwash. Some also go to her for potions and spells. Spells? Come now, Arthur. Truth be told, she's a nice old lady. I sometimes see her foraging in the brambles around here. Will she burn at the stake sometime soon? You might think us backward in Beulah, Thomasina, but we're not that backward. Sorry, Arthur. I only meant to tease. Goodbye. Tara. Yeah, she's lived this long. I guess they aren't going to burn her at the stake anytime soon. Hi, Stripes. No, Stripes, you can't become a witch's familiar. Ah! Thomasina, dear, come say goodbye to your father. Come on now, don't make him wait. I don't want to. Aren't you going to miss me? I hate you, Daddy. Those are strong words for such a little lady. I want to come with you. We've been through this, little bird. You can't come with me this time. But we'll go to Seabra next month. I promise. Oh, what a dig that shall be. I hate you. Well, I love you. See you soon, little bird. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, this had to be right before Hobbs Barrow. Oof. Okay, last time we went this way. Men were working here. And that's all done. The resin has set somewhat. It's firmly gripped to the stump. Oh, it's a good thing we're not stumped. I've collected some waxy resin. Shall we wax poetic about it? Maybe. Folks, you're gonna have to learn to deal with this. I'm sorry. It's the old woman I saw at Bewley Station. Please, forgive my intrusion. Are you Mother Mildred? Some call me that. I prefer Mildred Walker, given as that's my name. Apologies. Thomasina Bateman. I think we met at Bewley Station. I take it Panswick's men have cleared off. Good riddance. Those ruffians would cut their own noses off if he asked them to. I 
recognized you the moment I laid eyes on you at the station. I beg your pardon? Oh, yeah, it's quite a striking family resemblance. You have your father's eyes, Miss Bateman. Well, this is oh, shit! My father. Such piercing blue eyes he had. What a handsome young man. William. He was here, in Bewley. Oh, yes. A long time ago, mind. Twenty-five years by my reckoning. But I'll never forget those eyes. Why was my father in Bewley? He were helping Samuel Bride and excavate Hobbs Barrow. You must be jesting. Do I look like I'm jesting? How did you come to meet my father? One might say I have a reputation in these parts. Folks from no, all we come to me for help with their ailments. Fernwood is abundant with flora that, if mixed correctly, will cure almost any ill. Your father must have caught wind of this, as one day he came to me, asking for a cure. A cure for what? Your mother were with child, and she was suffering the most terrible nausea. Adam. I made something to help her. The journal. This was entered in the journal. It belongs to my father. What journal? Take a look at this. A passage recalls meeting a local wise woman to seek a tincture for his beloved's nausea gravidarum. Aye, that's me. I made the tincture for him. This... this is incredible. You don't recognize your own father's handwriting. It's been so many years since I've seen it. What can you tell me about the excavation? Well, not much. I only met your father twice. The last time he asked me if I knew anything about binding magic. Binding magic? He said he needed it for the excavation. Hogwash. My father is a man of logic and reason. Why would he be asking about such nonsense? Perhaps you don't know him as well as you think you do. Anyway, I know nothing of magic and told him so. He seemed disappointed. I never saw him again. But I understand the excavation went ahead. Samuel bride and hanged himself not long after. Reason enough for you to stay well clear of that place. You never saw my father again after the excavation? No. I always assumed he just went home. Hmm. Who excavated Hobbs Barrow alongside Samuel Bryden and my father? From memory, it were just the two of them. Charles Bryden mentioned there was a third man involved in the excavation. Is that so? Well, you'd best ask him about it. He knows more than I do. The landlord of the Plough and Furrow told me about a folk tale associated with Hobbs Barrow. Something about a goblin. Are you familiar with it? No doubt there is such a tale. Name any beastie you can think of and someone round here will have a story about it. My thoughts precisely. What do you make of this stone? I-A-W. I haven't a clue. Perhaps it's an old folk trinket or a talisman of some kind. The moors are steeped in folklore. What do you think my father meant by binding magic? I've no idea. He didn't explain more and I didn't wish to pry. Hmm. This just doesn't sound like my father at all. You'll have to ask him yourself. I'm afraid my father has been incapacitated since I was a child. He cannot speak nor move. Terrible. Oh, I I'm sorry. You said that the flora here could cure almost any ill. Almost, my dear. But your father's affliction sounds beyond my abilities. Now, Worth this, a shot. Had, had this not been the case, things would have gone differently. Can you tell me anything about Leonard's shoulder? I know of him, as is the nature of such a small town. I also know he invited you here. Little escapes you, Miss Walker. So they say. My path rarely crosses with his. Let's put it that way. But he's a nice enough fellow. I see. So he exists. Do you know Lord Panswick? I know his labourers make a mess of these woods, the brutes. <laughs> the man himself hasn't graced me with his presence. You've never met him? Not since he were a wee lad. A maid brought him to me with a sore stomach. It were all the rich food they were feeding him. Now more. Thank you for your help, Miss Walker. So it sounds like Miss Walker is Miss more Bateman. the doctor of this Freaking yes. village. Remember what I told you when we first met. You're better off waiting for the next train back to the city. 
Why? Well, the wise men were pretty much the incorporating the educated doctors back in the olden days. Tell me you won't disturb Hobbs Barra. I can't make that promise, Mildred. Can't say I didn't warn you. There is something unnatural about that place. We must seek to understand the world by rational means, Ms. Walker. One cannot.